right, welcome back. Uh, this is another uh, segment here with Dr. Rachel as well, too. And today we want to kind of touch on a different topic. So what would you like to discuss today? We're going to talk about uh, high cholesterol and then a little bit of cardiovascular disease and kind of the, the interplay there. People think that's pretty simple stuff, but mm -hmm. I assume that's not really that simple of a conversation, though. Yeah. So for those that don't know, cardiovascular <clears throat> disease is the leading cause of death in the United States and one in three adults actually has high cholesterol. So it would be fair to assume or fair to think that because we have that large percentage of the population has high cholesterol, then that means that's why we have a high um, cardiovascular disease death rate. But it's not that simple because 50% of people that have had heart attacks actually have normal cholesterol hmm. levels. Interesting. So there's more to it. It's, it's not that simple. It's not a, a high cholesterol equals heart attack and cardiovascular disease kind of thing. Gotcha. So kind of explain to, to me and the, the viewers, what's the difference between like a traditional medical approach and a functional medicine mm -hmm. approach to handling mm -hmm. these cardiovascular issues? Yeah. So there's, there's more to look at than just cholesterol when we're assessing cardiovascular risk. Um, blood sugar control and inflammation would be two of the biggest ones. So insulin resistance mm -hmm. is a word that people hear and it leads to a lot of chronic issues. Uh, but especially cardiovascular disease and high cholesterol. So the mechanism behind that is <clears throat> insulin's job is to take blood sugar from the bloodstream and put it into the cells so that the cells can use it as energy. Mm -hmm. And when you have a constant um, intake of carbohydrates, uh, sugar, processed foods, things like that, you have elevated blood sugar all the time. And then eventually your cells say, I don't need any more. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. That's enough. And then um, they stop um, responding to, insul or, yeah, to insulin. And then now you have elevated blood sugar, you have elevated insulin that keeps trying to get it into the cells, but it can't. And insulin, when it's elevated and its job, will increase cholesterol production. Mm -hmm. So if you have increased insulin, you'll have ins or increased insulin or insulin <laughs> increased cholesterol production. Yep. So, so basically that's it's a just big thing. kind of like we're always just looking at the, the downstream effect right. many times, exactly. the symptom piece of it. Yeah. We're not really understanding what's going on in that, mm -hmm. in that top part mm -hmm. of it. So Yeah, and then inflammation would be another big part of that. So inflammation also increases cholesterol production. So bad diet, chronic stress, sedentary lifestyle, toxins, chemicals, um, low-grade chronic infections, mm -hmm. things like that, all They're will increase. They're all common things yes. so many people deal with. Yep, will increase cholesterol production itself too. Okay. So like from a treatment standpoint, like what do you focus on with people mm -hmm. then? Yep. So my approach and the functional medicine approach um, would first off be why do you have high cholesterol in the first place? Mm -hmm. We look at all those different blood sugar markers. So beyond fasting glucose and hemoglobin A1C that people get checked often, uh, there's more to look there. Um, lots of inflammatory blood markers that we can look at and many of them are even cardiovascular specific. Mm -hmm. And then the coolest part um, that I think when it comes to the high cholesterol is you can take a deeper dive into, into cholesterol numbers. So when you get um, your lipid panel back from your doctor, that's mm -hmm. just a cholesterol amount in your blood. Uh, it doesn't take into, a, into account the particle number of mm -hmm. the cholesterol particle number or the um, size of the cholesterol particle. And so both of those actually give more indication and more insight into the risk of cardiovascular disease when it comes to cholesterol. So gotcha. really cool in the diagnosis there, we can look at more and just figure out why you have high cholesterol in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then uh, treatment wise, lots of times people are um, prescribed a statin or they're just really advocated for. I have lots of patients come in with barely elevated cholesterol numbers and their doctor suggested a statin. And don't get me wrong, plenty of people need to be on them, especially the ones that that aren't willing to work on the things mm -hmm. that will lower cholesterol. You know, it, it, they are they are helpful when it comes to that, but there is a lot of things that you can do naturally to help decrease cholesterol, and um, that, that's my job. So all the different diet changes, lifestyle changes, things like that, that you can work on, supplementation to work on to, first of all, find out why you have high cholesterol, and then and then kind of work on whole body health to get to lower that. Gotcha. So it's just a lot of this is just taking a different perspective. Mm -hmm. On it, and then yeah. actually addressing the upstream mm -hmm. causes why yeah. some of these yeah. things as well too. Yeah. Novel concept, right? Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, we appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to this. If it's something that um, you've had questions on specifically, or family members that feel like you're just not getting any headway with things, take advantage of the opportunity to sit down with Dr. Rachel, do a consultation with her, um, and find out if this is a route or a path that would make sense in regards to moving down. And, and very simple, sit down with you for 20 minutes, half an hour, mm -hmm. you know, pretty good idea. Beyond that, then kind of what's next step for somebody? Yeah, so we usually 
sit down then for an hour to an hour and a half and go through everything from birth to present. So all of your past medical history matters that start at birth into now. Um, everything from, you know, what did you eat? What was your disease processes? What was your dental history? How many antibiotics have you been on? All these different things, they, they add up to the whole picture and what's going on. So we sit down like that and then we usually have some sort of comprehensive blood panel mm -hmm. um, that will really give a wide lens, all encompassing approach or, or insight into what's going on with the patient individually. And that's where we see those inflammatory markers and those cholesterol markers and blood sugar markers and things like that. Cause Absolutely. Those are all important. Yeah. Just really get the full yeah. picture, the full story. It really shows us what's going on. Yeah. At cool. the root cause. Awesome. Take advantage of that. Again, if you have questions, reach out to us here at Delta Health. Talk to you soon. Thanks.